Today's talk is probably one of the most important conversations that we can have on this entire summit. And that is all about mindset. Because you ladies know that you ain't getting nowhere if your mindset is all messed up, right? And so many of us are really good and strong and we feel great when we're all by ourselves, but then all of a sudden we get into the pageant environment and we get in our heads, right? So I have a guest for you today that is going to try to really get rid of all that negative stuff and help you think from a positive winner's mindset okay there is a huge difference in that from the loser mindset to the winner mindset we talked about that on wednesday night's recap if you haven't watched that one yet get in there and watch it um we are i'm so excited to introduce to you today the beautiful tori cruz tori welcome to the virtual pageant summit Hello, hello. How is everyone today? Thank you so much for having me on. I'm so honored that you chose me as the mindset coach for this virtual summit. Um, First off, can we just give Alicia a round of applause for Uh, literally like throw the hearts up because she has done incredible this week, you guys. Like it takes so much work to put one of these on and I don't think any of us realize how much work it takes, but you've just done an incredible job and I just want to First of all, thank you. And, you know, on behalf of everybody listening, I know they've gotten so much out of it, too. So thank thank you you so much for what you've been doing. Tori, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for recognizing (laughs) that and for seeing that. I so appreciate you. And you are the best person to talk about this mindset, especially to this pageant audience, because you have had to overcome a lot in pageantry. On Wednesday night in our recap, (sighs) we talked about the three things that are difficult to overcome. The first being a um, bad decision, when we make a bad decision. The second being a betrayal, when someone betrays us. And the third being a loss. And in pageantry, Mm -hmm. we sometimes lose more than we win, or perhaps before (laughs) we win. And I know you've had that experience, yeah. So can you share a little bit about your pageant experience and how you got into doing the mindset work that you're doing today? Yes, absolutely. So gosh, you just, you just nailed it right there. I mean, I lost way more than I won. I, so just a little backstory. I actually, I was an, I was an athlete growing up. And so I was playing basketball, volleyball, golf, I was camping, fishing, traveling, doing whatever. And I had no clue what pageantry was at all. And so, you know, I got to college and I, you know, I had that competitive nature. And so I got to college and I was like, you know what, I need to do something competitive. Like I can't just go into school. You know, I was acing all my classes, of course, of course. but, <laughs> of course. but uh, um, I just need something to do competitive. So I was sitting in my dorm room freshman year and I remember seeing this ad for Miss USA come up on Facebook. And I was like, Miss USA, like these women are goddesses. Like these are totally out of my reach. Like I could never go on the Miss USA stage. And, you know, but still I clicked it because I'm like, compete at Miss USA. Like, I wonder what you have to do. So I clicked on it and then I realized that, oh, you have to compete at a state level first (laughs) to win win that to go to nationals. Yeah. (laughs) So long story short there, I ended up signing. I was going to the University of Iowa at the time and I signed up for Miss Iowa Team USA. Well, I went there. I had no clue what I was doing. These girls were like, they're like, I heard them on the bus on the way to the auditorium, auditorium and they're like, I've competed. This is my sixth year competing. And I was like, say what? I was like, you're six year competing. Like, are you really? Like, hang it up, hang it up. <laughs> and I didn't say this to them, but that's what I was thinking in my head. I was so intimidated by them at the time because I was a teen and these were girls in the Miss Division. Yeah. And then, you know, time went on and actually I played semifinalist that first pageant as a teen contestant yeah. in Iowa. And then my roommate won though, so that was pretty cool. Oh, that is cool. And and then a couple years later, I competed in the Miss Iowa USA and I aged up. And so when I competed in that, I was semi-finalist again. And then I took a couple years off, graduated from college, moved to Missouri for an outside sales position. Hmm. And I was like, you know what, new directors, a new state, I'll give this thing a try again. And I did, and I was hooked. Like, I loved it all of a sudden. I don't know what went off, it was just like, I'm going to win this thing thing. Like I'm going to Miss USA. I just made this decision. Yep. I'll never forget it was in 2014. And I just made that decision. I was like, I'm going to do this wow. and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get to that Miss USA stage, no matter what. Yeah. And I almost ate you out, but yeah. <laughs> I got there. Yep. So I competed four times total in Missouri and through that whole process. Um, that third time I competed, I placed first runner up and that yeah. was probably the hardest thing. Yeah 
to ever go through. But I know. it was one of the toughest pills yes. to swallow. I mean, you got so close, you put everything, your heart and soul into it, and then you get first runner up and you're like, how do I do better yeah. next year? You know, like I, I did everything I could do. I don't know how to get that one step further. I felt like I was already there. And at that time, I wasn't very happy in my outside sales position. And it just was, I was selling commercial flooring for all of you who wanted to know what kind of sales I was doing. Extremely glamorous, yeah. ladies, extremely glamorous. Yeah. And I decided um, I actually wanted to be a freelance, or I wanted to be a sports reporter. I wanted to be the next Aaron Andrews. So at that time, when I placed first runner up, I was like, you know what? I have stayed in this, this, career, the sales position, only because I want to compete in Missouri. Like I only, I wanted to win this thing. I told myself I was going to, and I'm going to do it. And then when I placed first runner up, something hit me and I was like, I haven't stepped outside of my comfort zone one time in these three years that I've been in Missouri. Huh. And then I, and then I thought I was like, I'm going to Los Angeles. I can make this work. I'm still going to have my Missouri. I'm going to go Airbnb hop in yeah. LA for seven months before my pageant and just dive into the sports industry. I, I ended up doing it yeah. and I literally had three Airbnbs in a matter of seven months wow. um, throughout the whole city. Yeah. And I prepped for Miss Missouri. I was modeling full time with an agency out there in Los Angeles. And I, um, yeah, I developed my own brand for sports reporting and ended up being a freelance sports reporter. And then I just, I got so far out of my comfort zone when I went out there and networked my tail off and yeah. I got to Fox Sports and that was an awesome, awesome uh, experience in itself. Yeah, totally. But then pageant time came around yeah. and I went back home to Missouri and I competed and I took all that knowledge yeah. that I just had learned, just stepping so far out of my comfort zone, yeah. getting so uncomfortable and making these new connections. I used all of that and I put it into the pageant. Yeah. and. Uh, throughout all of these years, it was eight years total before I finally won. And in that eight years, I had hired 13 coaches, 13 wow. for, That's for pageant awesome. coaching, you know, like the runway, the interview, yeah. all of that yep. and hair and makeup, obviously. Yep. But then I ended up hiring coaches for my mindset and for my confidence. Oh. And that is what changed the game for me. And the second that I started focusing on my mindset and my confidence was the year that I won. Wow. And so now after that, you know, and I was Miss Missouri USA 2018, once I won, um, I decided, you know what, I'm going to start my own company after Miss USA and I want to be that coach and I want to be that mentor for you guys now yeah. to get your mindset to that next level where you're not only just doing this to win a pageant, like you're doing it for so much more, like a greater purpose in life. So I use Miss USA for a stepping stone to create my business and become an entrepreneur. Oh, I love it. Wow. This... <laughs> This story is just pulling in so many concepts of what truly separates somebody as a winner. Like you said, going all in, like kind of like burning the boats. Like I'm, there's no going back to that old me, you know, like I'm burning the ships and I'm headed straight to all exactly. the things I want. And you went seriously all in. Like you're like, I'm moving to LA. <laughs> I'm going to hire a gazillion coaches. I'm going to do this exact thing that I want to be doing. You know, it's awesome that you were able to do that and look where it brought you now today, which is incredible. Wow. Yeah. Right. It, it's uh, absolutely insane. It's such a blessing too that I found my calling at such a young age. And yeah. a lot of you listening, you know, you could find your calling at such a young age too, just because you're in pageantry. Yeah. You have such an advantage because you're learning these interview skills. You're learning, you know, runway skills, which seems kind of funny, but that's developing your confidence. Yes. I mean, if you can get on a runway and walk in front of hundreds of people, uh, you can walk into any room and own that room. Totally. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I love this. I'm just going to check in with our audience here because they are loving you. Um, Hallie says, love your shirt, Tori. <laughs> Angelica <laughs> says, oh, I love it. Angelica says, yes, the shirt is awesome. I like that. <laughs> Mallory says, wow, sports journalism is such an awesome industry. Yes, yes, yes. They're loving you. Um, oh, the t-shirt they love. Melanie says, wow, wow, wow. Um, hi from Missouri. Jo Jordan Smith says, hi from Missouri. Oh, love you, Tori. Hi, <laughs> I love Missouri. <laughs> Sashki says, Tr totally agree with you, Tori. Amanda says, thank you so much for being here. Angelica says, preach, girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It hasn't even begun, girlfriend. Yes, yes. Oh, 
I love it. Well, ladies, Tori has an awesome presentation for you today, and she created for you a guide so that you can follow along with the concepts that she is teaching you today. So to get that guide, I'm going to put up a slide. So screenshot this slide, but you are going to text the word unstoppable to 66866. Okay, so text that word unstoppable to 66866. Okay, that is going to redirect you to the guide. So you'll be able to get that guide and then uh, follow along with today's presentation. You can go there and get it now so that you're ready for uh, the pre zone. So cool. Without further ado, Tori, take it away. Go ahead and lead All us right. in. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, yes, um, if you do want to text unstoppable to 66866, I highly recommend it. You can follow along. It's a downloadable PDF. Um, you can either fill it out or you can wait, you know, till the end and fill it out. But I highly recommend you, you know, get a pen and paper, grab some notes because I have some some content for you guys that I really want you to take away and hopefully, you know, make you win your next pageant. So I first want to say thank you for being here because you guys right now, the ones who are here are the ones you're going to be successful. You're the ones, this is what separates the success from the unsuccess, the unsuccessful, are the ones who show up, who, who commit to something and you decide that you want to win and you're going to do whatever it takes to get there. So um, I, I love talking to pageant girls because you're so, I know how much hard work it takes to do what you're doing and I don't, you know, underestimate what you ladies are doing. You're rock stars and I'm just so, so happy to be here with you all today. So I have three steps that I do in my one-on-one -on -one coaching and my group coaching and I'm going to share those with you today to help you get to that next level of mindset and, and to win. So, and not only your pageant, but to win at life too. So three steps and that's clarity, confidence, and consistency. So if you could write those down, clarity, confidence, and consistency. And I got my numbers screwed up. My fingers screwed up there. I got four, three, whatever, you know, quarantine mode. So clarity, number one. So when, when we're going after something, right? So whenever I was competing in pageants, I needed a, cl a clear, concise plan of where I was going. So I had to make sure that my goals were all in place. And one big thing that I love to look at, you know, it's still – it's, I guess, beginning of, you know, April. So Q2, I say in business terms, I guess, but, but it's Q2. So we still have three more. We have a majority of 2020 left, even though we're in this odd circumstance right now with quarantine, it's still okay, guys, we're going to get through this. We're going to make it, but have goals for 2020. Still, you can, you can still have massive audacious goals. So one goal, um, or you need to have three massive goals. So write down right now on your piece of paper, what are three audacious goals that you have for 2020? Because you need to set these massive goals outside of pageantry too. If That's okay if you say you want to win your pageant. That's awesome. That should be on there, number one for sure. But you also need to have two more big goals. And once you think you have a big goal, go one step further and think a little further. And once you have that goal, go one step further. Make your goal so dang big that it scares the crap out of you. That's what I did. And it's fun. I mean, just like moving to LA for me, you know, that scared the crap out of me. I had no clue. I'm a small town girl from Iowa originally. And then I moved to Missouri and I had, it scared me. I was stepping outside my comfort zone, but make a goal so big that it makes you uncomfortable. Got it. Awesome. So three big goals. That's step one. And then if you want to go a little bit further, you can on that PDF that I sent you guys, your, your free gift there. I just put three audacious goals and those are your yearly goals. If you want to be an overachiever, I'm all for it and go one step further and break it down into, you know, the last three months, the last 90 days of the year, you know, Q3, those 90 days, Q2, those 90 days, obviously the first 90 days are already done. So, um, break it down into quarterly goals and then go even further, even further, break them down into monthly goals. Um, and then going even further weekly and then hourly. I mean, that's getting really intense right there. But, but you can do it if you want. And it really, the more specific that you get, the better it is, the more clear vision you have for yourself. So number one was clarity. Next step is confidence. We all want confidence, right? Like every single one of us. And, you know, some of you may look at me now and think, wow, she's so confident. She has such a positive mindset. Did you hear me? How many coaches I've had? That was just in pageantry. I've had 22 
coaches. I am not exaggerating. I have hired 22 coaches in the last 10 years. This didn't come overnight. I had to invest in myself. I had to invest in my goals. I didn't invest in my mindset and my confidence if I wanted to get to the level that I'm at today. And then, you know, even further someday. So confidence. So you have your three goals, right? We're going to develop your why statement for these three goals. But first, I want to get you in the, in the feeling mode, right? Like you got to feel these, these goals so deep. So take, take the pageant, for instance, since, since we're all pageant girls here. Take that first big goal of pageantry, you know, whatever pageant it is that you're competing for that you want to win. Take that first goal and make a make a column and put down feelings. What kind of feelings do you will you have when you win that pageant? What kind of feelings are you going to feel accomplished? Are you going to feel happy? Are you going to feel proud um, what other feelings? Just write down all the feelings, make a huge list of all the feelings and genuinely like sit there and feel it in your heart and your soul. Those feelings, like picture yourself winning and oh my gosh, like your family, your friends are going to be so proud of you. Like think of the impact that you're going to make on the lives of other people. Like that in itself is just everything to me, but put down all those feelings. All right. Are you jotting down notes like crazy? Hopefully. Okay, so feelings. And then I also want you to write down the rewards and the benefits. The rewards and the benefits that you're going to get once you win this pageant. And by the way, I want you to do this for every single goal. I know I'm only talking about this one with pageantry, but I want you to go ahead and, you know, after this live is over, I want you to go up one step further, two step further, and actually do it for your um, second and your third goal too. So rewards and benefits. Back to that. So benefits, what kind of benefit are you going to get once you accomplish this big goal? So for pageantry, you know, it, it needs to be so much larger than yourself. Like pageantry is just a stepping stone. You know, if some of you girls are making it your world right now, I'm going to tell you right now, don't. Because you do this for a stepping stone to something bigger in life. For me, my, my purpose was I wanted to use this as a stepping stone to help people like you and help ladies like you develop the confidence and the mindset. So now that's what I'm doing. But make it, it doesn't have to be that. Whatever it is, make it a stepping stone. Maybe it's going to help you in your future career. Maybe you do want to go into, you know, news or broadcasting or um, speaking or coaching or those are just examples. There's a million different things that you could do. But what are some benefits past pageantry that this is going to give you will it look awesome on your resume even if you want to go be a doctor because it shows discipline you know something that has nothing to do with being a doctor but maybe you want to be a lawyer something like that you have awesome interview skills i mean you can you can battle it out if you're a lawyer right like you know the things to say after pageantry you do enough training and so i would write down all the benefits that you'll get by completing this goal by accomplishing this goal. And then I want you to set a date. So this is a yearly goal, you know, or wherever your pageant stands, but I want you to set a specific date, get specific on, on when you want to accomplish each goal by. It's extremely, extremely important. So we have your, this is confidence section. So feelings, I want you to feel it. Like you gotta feel it in your core, the feelings that you're gonna get when you win, because that's what's gonna make you on those days when you don't wanna go to the gym, that's what's going to make you get your butt up, go to the gym, or in this case, maybe your home workout or outside in your backyard or go for a walk or a run or whatever it is. But those are the days when you have those feelings inside of you. Think of that. Think of that, you know, when you want to eat that ice cream instead of the broccoli right now because your pageant could be, you have no clue when actually, right? Like nobody does, but you got to stay on track. And so when you want to eat the ice cream and you know you should be eating the broccoli, you know, or the green juice. Um, just, just think of those feelings and think of all of the benefits that you're going to get because you stayed so disciplined during this time when a lot of people aren't like you, this is your chance to get ahead during this quarantine, this, this lockdown time, because you guys can do everything right, right now. And you're going to get to your pageant and you're going to be a rock star and you're going to be killing it. So feelings, benefits, and then set an exact date of when you want to accomplish this goal by. Another thing along the lines of confidence 
is your why statement. So now that you have the feelings, now that you have the rewards and the benefits, you have your date, why are you doing this? You see the, the, the rewards and the benefits, right? You see that in that column. So why, why are you doing this? Make this why so much bigger. I can't even emphasize enough, like so much bigger than yourself. It needs to be, you know, like for me, I want to impact millions of lives worldwide. And I knew that if I got to that Miss USA stage, it would give me credibility and it would give me an access to a whole nother group of people and a whole nother group of women that I could help empower and just ride along this journey with. And so make something, so maybe it's for your family. Maybe you just want to make your family so proud. Maybe nobody's even done this in your family before. It gives me the, the goosebumps actually just saying that. But, but maybe no one in your family's ever accomplished something so large like this before. And you want to be that leader. You want to do this for your family. That is a big enough reason right there. Um, if you want to do it for your health, maybe you want to become healthier. You want to become more fit. Think of all those reasons, those deep, deep reasons why you want to compete in a pageant. Maybe you want a job and you know that if you compete in a pageant, you're going to gain the confidence, the mindset to walk into no, any interview room and you're going to kill it and you're going to get that job. So whatever that why statement is, make that why statement for each goal. If you've downloaded that sheet, you see right there on the sheet, I have goal number one, two, three, put your why statement right there. And that is what gives you confidence in, in this goal is that you got the feeling, you have the reward, and then you have your big, big, huge why that's so much bigger than you even thought. You're like, oh, my why? I just want to compete in a pageant. I just want to win, be competitive. That's how I started out, but that's not how I ended at all. And I wasn't even doing that well in the pageant when oh, my only reason was I wanted to, to win, like just win. I just wanted to win. And you're not going to get there if that's your only reasoning. So make that why statement so, so, so powerful. And when you hit that goal, you will feel so empowered when you reach it. All right. So we have clarity. We have confidence. And then the last one is consistency. It is so huge to be consistent. I can't tell you enough how important it is to live the lifestyle that you're living during pageant season. Like, like walk the walk because I, I feel like I was almost living two lives for, I would say about four years before I really got serious. I feel like I was living two lives because in the off season of pageantry, I would go out with my friends. I would do all these things. And then it would be like two months before pageant time. And I was like, uh, oh my gosh, I better not go out and have a drink with my friends. I better start eating chicken and broccoli and I better start reading a bunch of books and I better crack down on my runway coaching, my mindset coaching, everything. And so, um, and you know, if you're in college, that's pretty much the, the demographic that I'm talking about because that's when it was really, you know, hitting me in post-college. And I was, I feel like I was living two lives because I've just cracked down at the end and then I finally woke up and I was like, uh, this is not going to work. Like I am never going to win if I am Tory over here and then I'm pageant Tory. And my life, my life was just not aligning. It was two different people. And number one, that was exhausting. And number two, once I discovered that I wanted to do something so much larger than just win, it was like, I'm going to, I got to walk my walk, you know, can't just talk the talk right now. Like you got to walk the walk and actually follow through and, and be this person all year long. Because if you're faking it now, or if you're just doing this little prep over here now, think about faking it for a whole year when you win, <laughs> like talk about exhausting and mentally draining. And so it's just one of those things that consistency and making everything a lifestyle is huge. But there's certain things that I like to help you with that will totally keep you consistent with keeping your mindset on track and keeping your confidence at an all-time high if you continually do these things. And, and you will win if you – this is exactly what I did the whole – the two years that I really got serious. Um, and I knew I was going to go to Miss USA because I was really darn close to aging out, guys. Like – I was, I turned 27 at Miss USA and the limit at Miss USA was 28. So, I mean, I was flirting with it. I was like the grandma of the group, you know, so I always joked when I was there anyways, but 
So consistency, consistency, consistency. So your daily habits. Um, one thing that I read that really I would highly recommend for all of you is the secret. I don't know if you've read it or not, but I, I listen to the audible because it, it is a little bit different, the wording and everything. It's, it's not like your typical book, but I read the secret and it's all about the law of attraction for those of you who aren't familiar with it. And I just absolutely loved it. It got my mindset in the right spot. I also read, read uh, wake up happy by Michael Strahan and his book is awesome. Um, so those are a couple of books that really I started out reading right away. And I also started writing down gratitudes. So that's one thing that I really want to talk to you guys about right now is you have to get your mind in a state of gratitude every single day, every single day. And first thing when you wake up, put your feet on the ground and say, thank you. And go through your head and just say, thank you. Th and just count your blessings. And I was actually doing a YouTube interview yesterday for my channel and, and my guest, he was like, I wake up and he's like, I, I thank God for my arms, my legs, my brain, you know, my voice because we speak. And it was just like, it was really cool. And it, it totally, that's exactly what I've done. I, I put my feet on the ground. And I first thing I say in the morning is thank you. And then every single step I say, thank you, thank you, thank you until I forget. <laughs> But, but then I, you know, go make my morning coffee and then I sit down and I write down my gratitudes and right now more than ever, ladies, gratitude is so huge because we have a lot of these negative, um, external sources, you know, the news that's coming at us. And yes, it is extremely important to know what's going on right now, but watch it only for a limited time because you need, you need to have positive external sources coming in your ears at all times. So um, back to gratitude, write down, I normally write down five gratitudes a day, but during these times, and I may just continue, I write down 10. I mean, double up, write as many, write as, many as you want, but I right now am writing 10 gratitudes a day. Do you wanna do five in the morning, five at night? Like that's kind of a fun way to do it too. Me at nighttime, I just want to go to bed. <laughs> I'm ready to go to sleep. So I just double down in the morning and it really gets your, your mindset in the right spot. And you don't have to make them like, I'm grateful for my car. Well, I guess we can't really go too far right now, but make it small things like you're grateful for running water. Like you're grateful for coffee or you're grateful for family time. Make it something that it doesn't have to be like you're grateful for this house you know or just make it really really small and intimate gratitudes um and you can throw some larger ones in there too but i think it's really important just to appreciate the things that like you're grateful for a fork so we can eat food like little things like that that just get your mindset in this state of mind that's just like wow we are so dang lucky like we're so lucky with all this going on right now we are still blessed with an abundance so get your mindset right with gratitudes also, after gratitudes, I do what I call I am what I am statements, and I write down 10 of them, and they are my goals. So I write down my 10 goals as if they have already happened. And now you may be kind of confused because I just said three goals, but, you know, at the very beginning with, uh, with clarity, but, um, but obviously we all have way more goals than just three. And these can be your quarterly or monthly goals, too, that you, that you throw in here with your I am what I am statements. But for instance, I put, I am nominated for Forbes 30 under 30, or I am the founder of a children's foundation, or I am married to my dream husband. I mean, can I get an amen right there? Like, come on, ladies. Like, we all want to be married to our dream husband. <laughs> but, but that's just a little side note off of pageantry. So, so I do that. But, you know, for instance, you guys want to win a pageant. So, but I am the... You know, like for me, I wrote down, this is actually kind of funny. I went back in one of my journals from like back in 2015 and all I had were pages that said, I am Miss Missouri USA 2015. And then I'd autograph it, Tori Cruz. I did that for, I was Miss Missouri in my head. I was Miss Missouri 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, <laughs> swear to God. And I have pages every single day I would I would probably write it I would say a hundred times I didn't keep keep count but I'd probably write it a hundred times I'd write down Miss Missouri USA 2018 Tory Cruz and I just ingrained this in my head so by the time I won I was like oh yeah I was signing contracts and I was like oh yeah I wrote this for like four years now you know or three years and so it was 
it's, but it has power. When you write something down, you literally are manifesting your dreams. So I want you guys to write down every single day, 10 times a day. I want you to write down your dreams as if they've already happened. They could be 10 years, 15 years from now. Even I want you to write them down as if they already have happened. So definitely don't forget your pageant one. That's like number one on the list. Be like, I am. And then whatever your title is that you want to get. So, um, so that is the I am's. And then also exercising once just move your body, be consistent with exercising. I don't care if it's just 30 minutes a day. Maybe you go for a 30 minute walk, you know, maybe you go for a 30 minute jog or do jumping jacks for 30 minutes and then do a couple planks. And I'm like, I don't care what it is. Just do something that is moving your body and I'm sure for those of you who like work out and then take a few days off, like you, you see that when you don't work out, your mindset is not as sharp. You're not as confident in yourself. But like when you're confident in your body, because you're like, dang, you look in the mirror, like I'm looking good today. Your confidence automatically goes up. And that's part of the winning mindset. You guys is like when your confidence goes up, like you are going to win, you're going to win the day, first of all, and then you're going to win the steps leading to the pageant. And then you're going to win that dang crown. So you need to exercise, move your body, just get out there and, and, and do it. So also food, nourishment, food is a good thing. I, I can't stress enough. You guys need to eat and you just need to eat things that bless your body and fuel your body. Think of, think of food. I had to think of it, you know, when I was in pageantry, I had to think of it as fuel. Now I just, I know what to do and what to eat. But then when I was kind of learning the techniques, um, I had to look at it as fuel. When I ate something, I was like, oh, is this pretzel going to like fuel my body or is it, or is it going to make me more sluggish? And we all know it tastes pretty darn good, especially like Annie Ann's, but we can't get that right now. But like that tastes pretty darn good, but it doesn't make us feel good like 10 minutes later. Same thing with, you know, any fried foods or anything. But I highly recommend when you, if you're still, you know, I'm not a nutritionist or a health expert by any means, but if you're still in that process where you're learning nutrition, just a, just kind of a con- use your common sense a little bit. Like when you go to grab something out of the fridge or the pantry, say, is this going to bless my body or is this going to harm my body? Because it's pretty easy to figure out. We all have a pretty good sense. Even if don't go with what you want, what you're craving, go with what is going to bless your body. Because like I said before, unfortunately, we have no clue when your pageants are and you got to be in shape. You got to be ready and on top of it. And, you know, like, like I said before, like if you are wanting that, you know, fried food or whatever it is at this point, because we're just kind of, you know, we're in quarantine. It's just like, well, I kind of want to eat something crappy for me. No, like go back to those feelings and go back to those benefits and the rewards in that confidence section and think to yourself in your why statement and just think to yourself like, heck no, would a Miss USA, would a Miss Universe, would a Miss World, would, you know, any even Miss America, would anybody would they be eating this right now? Heck no, because Miss USA would be training for Miss Universe because she doesn't know what Miss Universe is. So you got to think, I never, ever, ever thought of myself as a state title holder. I always thought of myself as a national title holder. And cool, it would have been awesome to go to Miss Universe, but I thought, you know, one step at a time here. But, <laughs> but I always, you will never hear, if you ask any of my family or friends, you would have never, ever heard me say, well, if I win this, And that's another thing I want to say with consistency. Don't say, well, if I win this, you know what? If they think you're too, too confident or arrogant by saying that, by saying, you know, no, I will be, then you know what? Your true family and friends will understand because they're behind you 100%. And if you ask any of my friends and family, I always said, when I miss USA, granted, I didn't win miss USA, but you know what? It got me to that stage. And it got me to win even Miss Missouri USA. And so that's so important. It's just to speak it into existence because if you're saying, if I win, um, it, it's just already doubting yourself. It's, it's a doubt. So why don't you just say, when I win and say it humbly, you don't have to say it, you know, with, you know, cockiness or whatever, just say it very humbly. If you talk about it, I'm just saying, you got to speak positive about yourself. Neg- never talk negative to yourself either. Never, ever, ever. 
If you want to say something, just keep it in your head because do not speak anything out loud that is going to harm you or your mind or degrade. You know, don't ever say, oh my gosh, I'm so bad at this runaway walk. Like, oh my gosh, I can't get, you know, I know Luciero was on here yesterday and she's awesome. I actually worked with her quite a bit and, you know, her, her spins or I don't know exactly if she taught all of those like turns and everything yesterday, but her, she's, she's a master and some of her things are really challenging. And I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. I got discouraged sometimes. And I was just like, oh, dang it. I can't get this one thing. And I get it, you guys. I've been there. But just don't – I didn't say it out loud, though. I didn't let anybody believe that I wasn't confident in what I was doing because I never talked down on myself. And I actually learned that through The Secret, too. So I highly recommend that book. But just positive self-talk. Never say anything negative about yourself. Um and so, so yeah, I would say that's pretty much, um, oh, as far as external, um, external sources coming in, that is something really, really important. I know I touched on that just a little bit before, but podcasts, um, there's so many podcasts out there. Alicia, yours is amazing. Like you're phenomenal. She, gosh, guys, like you're so lucky to have her, but her podcast is amazing. Number one. Um, I would also say, um, my YouTube channel actually. So I, and Alicia's going to be on there as well. I'm so excited, but, um, but my YouTube channel. So I actually interview on my YouTube channel, many different individuals who have been extremely successful in their career and their daily habits and mindset tricks. So I would highly recommend you jump on there. A lot of the girls that I've actually, women that I've interviewed on there come from pageantry because it's such a sisterhood. I mean, sounds cliche, but it's, it's such a sisterhood. It's awesome. It's so cool. And they're doing huge things now and they have really, really good advice for all of you. So I just want to bring that knowledge out of them and bring it to you guys. So I would check that out for sure. Um, I love Rachel Hollis's podcast. She's always super uplifting. Just throwing a couple of my favorite out there um, for you guys to listen to. So uh, Jenna Kutcher, I don't personally listen to many of hers. I had before, and I know a lot of a lot of females are really inspired by her. So if you haven't jumped on hers before, I love Trent Shelton. I, I just love it. It's called Straight Up. He is the jam. Like, guys, I love him. He's so awesome. He just shoots it straight, and he has a super strong faith. And I just – I really love the way he goes about mindset and positivity. He's just real and authentic and uh, – and, straight up. That's what this podcast is. So highly recommend his as well. Uh, but yeah, I think, um, external sources. And another thing is I know we can't get out and hang out with friends right now, but when you can, or even, you know, through text message, through video chat, whatever it is, who you surround yourself with is more important than, you know, I know everybody's probably heard the saying already, but you're, you become like the five people that you spend your most time with. And it's so True. It truly, truly is. And I remember when I was in, I was living in St. Louis, I just moved down there and I wasn't that, you know, I didn't really know too many people yet. And I just started, you know, competing in Miss Missouri again. I wasn't like really in depth yet. And I had this group of friends and they were great. They're awesome people, but their, their goals were not where my goals were. They weren't, they weren't aligned. Their decision makings on the weekend, uh, wasn't what, was going to lead me to become Miss Missouri USA. And I hung out with them every single weekend. Like we had a great time, great memories. But then once I decided like, okay, I can't be living these two lives. I decided, you know what? I, I can't, I was put in a really bad situation with that group of friends and I lost friends because I called them up the next next day after, you know, on that Sunday after hanging out with them on Saturday night. And I said, you know what? My goal is to become Miss Missouri USA. And they knew that. And I said, and I was put in a situation that was unsafe and I was unaware of it. And I said, true friends don't do that to true friends. And you know what? I think you're a great person, but our goals and our mission in life right now, especially is not aligning. And I know how bad I want this, that I want to go to Miss USA and compete at Miss USA because it's going to lead me to now being an entrepreneur. But Sometimes my point in telling you this story is sometimes you have to break up with your friends and if they're not on the same level as you, as far as your vision and your goals, and I'm talking about relationships too, if they're not there and I went through it with relationships, let me tell you, that's a whole other podcast, but it's, it's so true. Like you have to align yourself with the right people and have the right people in your circle 
to get to the the to build an empire. If that's what you want to do, is build an empire in Elena Cardone's terms, then you need to surround yourself with a support system that doesn't doubt you, that always supports you, and only speaks positivity into your life and will never, ever, ever put you down for how big your goals and your dreams are. So I encourage all of you right now, maybe you need to go break up with a friend over text or a video chat or something, but but no, I'm serious. Just surround yourself with awesome people and people who support you and have you know very, very high morals, high values, and are great influences because you're going to be a leader. You already are a leader and you're going to become even a bigger leader once you hit, you know, the bigger stages. So just, you know, protect yourself, protect your brand, protect your image. So those are the three things that I have for you and clarity, confidence, and consistency. Like I said before, text unstoppable to uh, 66866 and you can download that PDF. If you have a problem, if you don't see it in your email inbox, um, shoot me an email at info at highlights and the letter N heels.com. And I'll be sure to send that over to you. Um, if your one email doesn't work, try another one. Um, but hopefully you guys all got it. No problem. And yeah, if you have any questions, yeah. let me know. This was awesome. Oh my gosh, Tori, I have to share with you what these women are saying in the comments because it is so beautiful. Everybody is just like high-fiving you. You have like... <laughs> A thousand hearts. Everybody's loving you. This is awesome. Like the reflecting on everything that you're saying, like, yes, yes, you have to write things down. Um, feelings and pictures of self winning. Um, I love this. Yeah. Lily says, I'm a small scale mindset coach and the why is so important. And Lily, yeah. you are a big time mindset coach at the beginning of your journey. You're just on the start, okay? Remember the I am statement she talked about, right? You're a yes, big time you. mindset coach, <laughs> Lily. Awesome, this is good. The why factor, everyone is saying this why factor, yes, is so so huge. Um, your why should be so powerful that it would make you cry. I love that. Oh, Fadlina says, speak into my soul right now. Oh, I, love <laughs> I love that. This is great, girls. Yeah, pageant cram session. So Amanda uh, uh, can relate to that pageant cram session versus reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally yeah. true. Oh, they are loving this. Good. Yeah. My I am statements, writing your goals. Wow, this is so good. So ladies, I put the titles of those books that she was saying. I commented those. I commented her YouTube channel. I highly recommend watching her YouTube channel because Tori's fearless and she will ask <laughs> anybody to be on this thing. She's got the president and CEO of pageantry magazine. She's got a ton of former Miss USA's. She's got people that have followings that are like 60,000 people, you know, she's bringing all kinds of people directly to you. So follow her YouTube channel. I would love for us all to follow her YouTube channel and get her to a hundred subscribers. So she yeah, doesn't have to please. use this giant channel link. And instead yes. we can get her to have it say highlights and heels or whatever, Tori Cruz <laughs> or something cool. Um, cool. So thank you, Tori. That was awesome. So Tori, do you have a little bit of time, like 10 or 15 minutes to take some questions? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Great. Absolutely. So ladies, the best way to ask your question is to do Q colon, write your question and put a question mark at the end. So then I will be able to see it as a question. Gloria says, thank you so much for speaking truth to us today. That's awesome. Um, yay, incredible. Gita I says, it's incredible. This is awesome. Monique says, <laughs> you are a great motivator for women to participate in pageants. <laughs> so true. Yes, yeah. I just speak the truth. Yep, that's right. Shivana says, this has made me hit the reset button on my thinking. That's beautiful. Wow. Awesome. I love this. Love this is that. good. So Gita is asking, so if they are outside of the U.S., they can email you for this document. So yes, info, right? Oh, yes. Info at Highlight and Heels. I'm going to put her slide up again so you can see the website and um, her YouTube. You can search Tori Cruz on YouTube to go directly to her um, YouTube channel and then text unstoppable, that word, to the number 66866. And if you're outside the US, you can email info at highlightsandheels.com. So cool, let's take some questions. Awesome, I love here. international, that's cool. Yeah, that is cool. Um, Hope you all are doing well over there. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. We have people from all over the world, like it's incredible. That's and amazing. for some of these women, it's like the middle of the night right now. So, so it's cool. pretty Props awesome that they're on with us live. On. Yeah. Uh, Amanda yes. said she already subscribed to your YouTube channel just now. So there you go. Thank yep, you. That's Thank awesome. You. Oh, and Bridget did too. Subscribe to your channel. 
Um, and she's about to order the books. Good, good. I put those links to the books in uh-huh. here so you know the exact ones. Um, and you can order them through Audible as well. Also, um, I will. I'm actually in the process of writing my own book, and then I'll get it all to you if you um, if you go to my website. And you can also subscribe to my email on my website. But Perfect. Um, also, a couple other books that I recommend besides yours, of course, Alicia. The Thank beauty. You. What is it? The beauty and grace. Beauty, uh, truth, and grace. Yep. Yes. Oh gosh, so good, so good. But also, I would recommend uh, Jensen Shiro's book. And it's just the book title, but you are a badass. Is she is so called. funny. Isn't she yeah. hilarious? That book is so good. She is so funny. Like, I would totally listen to the Audible because she is hilarious. Yeah. And her, it's she's just so good. And The Four Agreements. The Four Agreements oh, I would, is another book that... That I absolutely love. So this just some great. resources for that's you good. ladies. I'll put together a list of these so people can access them easily and um, okay. see all of them right there. Because that's a that's a great idea. Cool. Lucy subscribed. Perfect. Yay. That's awesome. Awesome. Um, and then I'm on social media at Miss M-I-S-S Tori Cruz. T-O-R-I. Yes. K-R-U-S-E. And that is actually in our description. So girls, in the description of this video, that's where you can go to follow her. So cool. All right. We've got a bunch of questions here for you, Tori. So um, cool. Ava is asking, this is a great question because I think that we all can relate to elements of this. So Ava's asking, what can you do to overcome comparison? Comparison. Yeah, that's one of those things that's extremely, extremely hard for a lot of girls in, in pageantry, I feel like, just because, you know, it is an, it's an individual sport. I always could compare it to sports. But um, one thing for me, I think it was just, knowing like staying in my own lane i just knew like going back to the goals and going back to the feelings and the rewards and the why statement everybody number one is created on this this earth to be them for a reason there there is no nobody is the same as you so it doesn't it doesn't matter what they're doing it it doesn't matter at all because you have everything inside of you to bring to the table and the you bring the best version of yourself and God or whoever your higher power is, like he will make it or she or whoever it is for you will make it happen. And so when you go into that pageant room, you got to think of yourself and you have to do your best to stay in your own mind and stay in your own lane and think of those feelings of when you're going to win. Think about your why. Just focus so much on yourself. Honestly, nobody's nobody's thinking about you. Everybody's thinking about themselves. So true. And so, so yeah. True. And so. Just, just try to stay in your own lane and and don't look at everybody else's comparison. Look at them as a friend and just be like, hey, girl, like we're in this together. I made more friends um, through pageantry and on pageant weekend. And just kind of on that note too, um, comparison wise, I made it. And maybe this will help you because maybe it helped. I think it kind of secretly helped me not knowing it at the time. But every single pageant weekend that I was at, I was at a lot of them. And every single weekend, I would make it a point to sit by somebody new at rehearsals or at mealtime. Not once in my six times of competing did I sit by somebody, and at Miss USA, did I sit by the same person at one rehearsal or at mealtime. And I made it a point every single time to ask them how they're doing, what their mission is, what they're about, what their life is. And when you sit down and you genuinely get to know somebody's heart, we're all there for the same thing, guys. Like we're all in this together, ladies, not guys, but we're all in this together. And so we're all more alike than we even know, especially us women. And so just, you know, sit down. My biggest advice then would be just sit down next to somebody new and ask them about their life and ask, ask about them. And, and we're all friends in this. So yeah, I hope that helped. That's really good. And it, and it really just comes down to like recognizing that, you can't have someone else's life, but also they can't have uh-huh. yours either. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. which is, is like a great thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a blessing. That's good. So Nyla's asking a really deep question, and I think that this is going to be something um, beautiful to speak into. You mentioned about friends and that that was – because I can only imagine now looking back on it, you see the fruit of it, so you know that it was wise right. to cut it off. But in the moment, I can only imagine all of the – the feelings you must have had of like, this is happening. So Nyla's actually asking, how do you break it to a boyfriend that his vision and your vision are not the same <laughs> path to success? Yeah, um, it's hard. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I mean, it's, it's really, really hard. But um, you have to 
Yeah, truth. You know, I, I'm on, honesty is always the best policy for me. I am, I, I speak the truth, you know, whether it's a friend or a boyfriend and boyfriends are hard because of course you have deeper feelings for them. Um, but I think you just need to sit down and have an honest conversation with him and just say, you know what, this is where I want to go. And there's billions of people in this world. I mean, you're, if you take the universe and then you take the United States or the country that you're at, and then you take the state, and then you take the city, and then you take where you're at. Think of how, and then there he is. Like, there's plenty of people in this world. Like, the universe is massive. So, my thing is, is sometimes we blow things out of proportion in our head, and we make it feel so much bigger than what it really is. If he doesn't align with your vision, just have just have an honest conversation be like this is where i want to go and i'm not feeling that you want to go in the same way as me or you're not encouraging me to go to this next level what are your feelings on this and if he says you know what i'm there for you i want to push you i want to make you the best that you can possibly be sure write it out see if he see if he follows through with with his words but if he doesn't just say you know what i I love you or I like you, but this is just not, we're not on the same wavelength. We're not on the same life path. And as hard as it is, um, we just kind of need to go our separate ways. So yeah. it's kind of one of one or the other if he follows through with it's his just, word, but it's, it's hard. It is hard. And it's still a breakup conversation. You know, yeah, it's, it, is. it is. And those are never easy to have. But I love what you said about honesty because people cannot yeah. argue your honest feelings no. when you say this is how i feel this is just how i feel then they aren't going to be able to argue that so i love that's such great right. advice just honesty right that's mm -hmm. good honesty so a quick question here how often should you review your goals jasmine's asking yeah so i don't think you can review them enough i mean so your larger goals your yearly goals i look at those about every couple months, I would say, but I also break down my yearly goals into, you know, 90 day goals. Yeah. And then I go into monthly goals, um, weekly goals. And then sometimes I try to, but I don't always do it. I'm not going to lie, go down to hourly goals. Wow. And so just hourly tasks that reach, you know, to that weekly goal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the large goals, I more monthly, and then, you know, especially after the end of every 90 days, I, I review them. But then I definitely look over um, my monthly, my, my weekly goals all the time. That's good. That's great. Uh, this is a good question in from Holly. So she's from Cleveland, Ohio, and she's saying, Hi. I have zero experience with pageantry. So how long do you recommend that I begin? Uh, like how long before the pageant should I start preparing for it? I don't think you can start soon enough. I ended up training year year round um, because there's so many different aspects of pageantry. I mean, you have interview runway, you have to learn hair and makeup, um, mindset confidence obviously is like, to me, the number one thing because that's what got me. But but there's so many different like categories of pageant training that you can do. And you gotta keep in mind that you're not just training for the pageant, you're training for the rest of your life because yeah. I would not be in this position if I wasn't training you know, those years. Um, and so you kind of have to have this bigger mindset where it's like, I'm training to accomplish this, but I am training to accomplish, you know, to accomplish the bigger thing. That's good. That's so great. I love that. So can't um, start too soon. Yep. Totally. I could not agree Invest more. in yourself. Invest in yourself. It's the best thing you could ever, ever do. 100%. Highly recommend it. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm curious. This is my own personal question for you because I know you had yeah. a, a platform, but in, in this USA pageant, they don't necessarily say you need to have a platform. We've right. been talking about platform a ton because we know that you can leverage it for media appearances. You can leverage it for speaking yes. appearances and then after the pageant for your career. So I'm curious yeah. if you could speak into how did your platform or legacy project really help you throughout pageant? Pageantry, but also afterward. Yeah. So you and I actually talked about this yeah. um, when I was competing with the Legacy Project. So I created a platform called First Man Up when I was Miss Missouri USA. And I created that program because I have a brother and I love, you know, working with guys too, because I just have kind of more of a tomboy mindset and just the you know, way about me because I grew up with the brother. And I developed this platform called First Man Up that helped. Um, I went and spoke to young men on the prevention of sexual assault and harassment by means of respecting women. And so I would go into middle schools and high schools 
and I would go in there and speak to them and it would just be an auditorium of, of boys. And it would just be like one-on-one conversation with, well, one-on-one with like 500, but, (laughs) but it was great. It was awesome. And I just kind of got, you know, talked, um, talked like a boy to them almost, you know, and talked like a friend of theirs and just encourage them to respect women because then they won't get in trouble later on in life um, with different, different things that we've all seen in the media. So I really was passionate about that because I just really want men to respect women and vice versa for sure. Um, but I created that, that legacy project, that brand as Miss Missouri, because I wanted to go to the Miss USA stage. And then I knew once I got there that I could, you know, if I had won Miss USA, I could take that to a worldwide platform and I could have helped so many men nationwide respect women and just learn. Like I was educating them. I wasn't like, be like, Hey, you gotta do this. You know, like be nice to women. Don't touch them. But it was more, it was more just like educating them. Like, Hey, here's the proper etiquette. You how to treat a woman. So you don't get in trouble and how 40 years down the road, you're not going to get, you know, put on the news for abuse or whatever, you know, these crazy things came out. So that was mine. And I was extremely passionate about it. After every talk, I would actually, um, all the guys in the auditorium, uh, I would say first man up and they would all stand up. And I said, who's going to be the first man to stand up for the woman in their life? And they literally all stood up. Oh and it God. was like, I get the chills. Just I get getting that. chills too. It oh. was really, really powerful. And a lot of the, a lot of the guys come up to me afterwards and we're talking and we're just like, Hey, my girlfriend's in this situation. And mm. it was just a really, really cool thing. So I, I, going back to your legacy project, I think you all need one, whether your pageant has it or not. Yeah. Um, we all have a story. We all have some way that we could really impact the world during our pageant time. And creating your le- legacy project is so important. Um, and there's no better person than you to help them with that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we've got some other questions in here. And I know that, so Tori typically works with millennials. That's her specialty is that those peers that are in, that are, because those, those mindset things, that the tricks that the world plays on your brain at that age are different than others. But I also know that these skills do apply to a very Absolutely. broad um, range of people. So Kama is asking, yeah. she says, I am 57 and I'm competing for the first time in 35 years. Awesome. I know, right? That's awesome. Good, so girl. she's saying, what is your advice to her competing with other women that are much younger than her? Rocket. I mean, you are, that is awesome that you're doing that. I mean, just go out there, go out there the best shape of your life. Like go out there just looking dynamite but go out there being yourself. Like, go back to your why. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing it when you're competing against other people that are so much younger than you? Go back to your why and let that shine so bright during pageant weekend and just just be a beaming light to everybody. I mean, they're so fortunate to have you there. I admire, there's um, the senior pageant ladies. Um, And I've met them at the Global Beauty Awards. And I just, I admire any any woman, you know, past their 20s, really, I mean, because 20s are your main, and teens are the age group that you primarily compete in a pageant. And I admire anyone um, older that's doing a pageant because I don't know if I'll be able to do it then, but I think it's really, really cool. And everybody's looking up to you. Everybody's yeah. looking up to you who's younger than you, who's who there, who's there at that pageant competing with you. So just remember that and let your light shine, baby. That's great. Oh, yes. Um, Holly is saying she subscribed to your channel just now. So that's awesome. Thank you. Yay. Uh, Sakshi says so much positivity, much love, much love. Gita says me too. I just subscribed to the YouTube channel. Yay. Oh, thank you all that's so much. That's awesome. Um, so Talisha is asking a really good question here. And we yeah. touched on this a little bit, but your experience is so perfect to share around this specific topic. She's asking, how do you bounce back from years of losses when this is your last year before you age out. Yeah, uh, every no is one step closer to your yes. Yeah. So y- girl, you already got the no's out of the way. It's, it's time for your yes. So get the right coaches. My best advice in, you know, like mindset coaches, legacy project coaches, yeah. um, get runway interview, invest in yourself and know that you, if, if you get there and when you win, then you'll know that you can take those skills that you just learned from all these coaches and apply it to your next pageant. And then you can apply it to life. 
Like you're never, you're never just investing in these coaches just because like you're investing in it for such a larger purpose. So just go in there and know that you've gotten those no's out of the way. You're going in with your yes and let your light shine. Just like I told the other woman and, and just go in there as your best self and know that you have done everything if you have. And like I said, I, I'm just a firm believer in investing in yourself because that's exactly how I did it. And yeah. if you have done everything in your power to win, yes. then, you know, it's all going to align exactly how it should. Yeah, that's that's excellent advice. You know, a lot of questions are coming in about personal insecurities. So I have children or I'm overweight or I'm very short um, and still wondering, like, is a pageant really for me? Could I even win this thing? Um, what Absolutely. advice do you give about mindset around what our what our insecurities are, things that we could change or things that we can't change? How do we handle those? Yeah. So a big thing is, I think it's just, you know, the things that you can't change, we can't change. Mm -hmm. For instance, our circumstance right now, right? Okay. With our world, we can't change a thing. So focus on the things that you can change. If you, you know, if weight is one of your, your worry points, you know, it's like do what you can. Everybody has a different body type, everybody. And there are different shapes and sizes, hair colors, skin colors, everything in pageant title holder, holders. There's not one size fits all, you know, one size fits all sort of thing. So um, if you can change, like if you have a thicker body type, then that's okay. That's awesome. Rock it. Go listen to Jenna Kutcher's podcast because she is awesome with that. Like she's so empowering. And so, you know, just do what you can eat healthy food and, you know, work out just like everybody else. And how your body is supposed to be, like how you were created in this world, like that's how you should be. So own it. Just own up to it. And just know that you've done the work, though, that all the work that you can possibly do to be in the best shape of your life for your pageant. And you'll go in there confidently and do those consistency habits, too, that I talked about. And you will be much more confident. Um, is, there was health. And then what was the other one? Oh, height. Yes, height. Yeah, Very so short. height. Yeah. Mm hmm I think uh, Sarah Summers, Miss USA. I don't even know. Is she five over five five. I, yeah. She was, she was not tall, mm -hmm. and you know I'm five ten, so I can't speak about height too much. I never had that problem. I was like, oh my god, can we wear like three inch heels, not six inch? <laughs> I'm like taller than everybody here, That's like good. all the men in the audience. Yeah. Um, but no, so I would say it doesn't matter with your height whatsoever. Mm -hmm. They're choosing, they're choosing girls, and no matter what pageant system you are. It all boils down to how much you believe in yourself yeah. and you just got to focus on those, those confidence and consist your why and those habits and you'll have the confidence to own up to who you are and like who you were created to be. That's my best advice. Just we're yeah. all created that way for a reason. Just do the work and know you put everything into it and you can't go wrong. Yep. This is great. Um, here's I, oh, there's so many good questions. Are we still okay on time, Tori? It's yeah, the top of the yeah, hour. Okay, we'll get we'll take a couple more questions. Um, so this one is so good. I think um, this is beautiful. So a lot of pageants, as you know, in the pageant world, often in an interview setting or or even in a more intimate setting, um, they have to share their heart with the judges. And yeah. for many people, especially as they age and they're in a Mrs. pageant, they've experienced a lot of life. So there's more betrayal, more loss, more uh, bad decisions, perhaps. And all of those things become a part of their story that they have to then share and kind of bear their heart to strangers. Um, yeah. How do you have any strategies or tips around how to be able to do that with confidence without letting the emotions get the better of you without turning to tears or yeah. something like that. Yeah. So if it's something that you can't speak about yet, don't do it. Yeah. Um, if you haven't, if you haven't worked your way through it yet, it's, you're not ready to talk about it. And we've all had those things in life where it's extremely, it's raw and it's hard to talk about. Um, we all go through ups and downs. Your judges have gone through so much too. So they understand that you don't, what they don't know, they don't know. So you don't have to, you don't have to pour out your entire life yeah. to the judges, um, for them to get to know that you're an authentic, a genuine person that has a story that goes through trials and tribulations. So my biggest piece of advice there is if, if you can't speak about something without crying, then you're not ready to bring it out to the surface yet. Keep doing the mindset work, keep, keep healing on the inside and you don't need to share that part yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. That's beautiful. Yeah, you can share it in your own time. 
Right. Um, okay, this is going to be our second to last question. I'm going to take one more after this. Um, but this question is about dealing with the haters. So as <laughs> Miss Missouri, you likely had a lot of people that loved you. But as we know, and we discussed this yesterday in our recap, that, that yeah. the higher you become as an influencer and as a leader, you tend to have people who, yes, love you. But then there are those people who become louder and louder that don't. What are yeah. some strategies or tools that you've used to um, deal with that that negative comments or just bad juju going around? How have you dealt with yeah. it? Yeah, I use it as motivation. I just mm. I look at it and I think it's so great that they're spending their time motivating me, and that's exactly how I look at it. Because if somebody says something on social media that's negative, yeah. I've been called so many names on social media. And, you know, even especially actually more in sports reporting. And there were just a bunch of things flying around. And it, at first, I was like, oh, like it punches you in the gut. Like, no doubt about that. But a second later, I'm like, ha, that person is just sitting behind a computer screen right now, not doing anything. And they're just typing hateful things because out of envy or jealousy. And it's so unfortunate that there's people that do that. But use it as fuel. Like, it's so fun. I just, I block them, number one, yeah. after I read it. I completely block them. You know what? You guys don't need haters on, on your side. It's one thing to have a different opinion that's respectful yes. on your comments, but you don't need haters. Block them. They, don't, they have no business on your page. And just protect yourself, protect your domain, and protect, protect your heart. So that's, that's what I would, I would say. Just use it as fuel and use it as motivation and climb higher. Just prove all the haters wrong. Totally, yes. And I, I love what you said there about like if those people are coming to your house, even if it's on your social media, your own website, your own, when they come into your house, the thing that you exactly. are providing as a platform, you have the right to kick them out. So by exactly. blocking people, I, I always say with my Facebook, I have an easy ad policy and a quick delete policy. <laughs> so I'll, I'll add you, but as soon as I don't like you, I'm changing my mind, I'm deleting You're you. You're gone. Like, yeah, exactly, because you came to my house, you know? Yeah, <laughs> that's so good true. advice. Yeah, totally, I love this. Okay, <laughs> last question here. Um, oh, where is it? It was so good. Oh, where did it go? I'm going to give you one more because that's really good. Um, okay, here's, here's a good one. Monique is asking this, which, by the way, she subscribed to your YouTube channel too. Um, so Thanks. she is asking, um, how much time do you spend breaking down your goals? So like when they sit down, they've got this paper, they're thinking through a lot of things are coming up right now. But yeah. what do they need to have a day of planning? And do you do a day of planning? Or how do you work this into your life on a day-to-day -day basis? Yes. So I usually spend about... You know, once I have my big goals, like at the beginning of the year, it takes me about a half a day to a day. I mean, I really want to make sure I'm aligned for the whole year and I have it all written out. Obviously, things things change month by month. I mean, things yes. change from just the quarantine here. Yes. And so um, I spent the other day, so I just planned out like my the next 90 days, yeah. um, April 1st I did. And it took me like an hour yeah. to do that. Um, I put down my accomplishments from the first 90 days and I put down everything that I wanted to accomplish the next 90 days. Mm -hmm. And that took me about an hour. But once you're the, like if you're just now doing this for the first time, I would say it probably takes you a good half a day yeah. and just block out a half a day and do it. It could, it could take you a few hours, but it does take me about a half a day to do that. That's good. Actually, Randy and I do the same thing in December. Do you? Yeah, we use the entire month of December to brainstorm our theme and our goals for the new year. And then we usually go on a trip together. My husband and I would go on a trip and we, and, and we actually have a group of friends that are, that just for this core thing that we join together and we all share. Okay. Here's, here's what we reflect That's on the past. Great. And then we say, okay, here's what I'm doing for the future. We set a theme for the year. We do quarterly goals and then we do yeah. monthly themes. And so then we That's break it off. Cool. And you know what's so funny is that since this whole coronavirus thing, Randy and I are like, we, we, we've been so busy now that we haven't said, and we keep saying to each other, we gotta <laughs> rewrite our goals because pretty much everything just went rrr, like totally right. in a new direction. And it's, it's so interesting that you still gotta like stay nimble, like you said, like things do change. So it's not like mm -hmm. these are like, I have to do these and, and you know. stone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's like, allow yourself to be nimble through those. That's so cool. I love that. Yeah. Wow. And I like what you said there about your theme. 
Yeah. Um, my, you actually just called me fearless, which I love because that's my year for, or that's I'm my word for 2020. Oh my gosh, of course is it is. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, I would highly recommend setting a word of the year. And you guys, I didn't really like, and you might find this kind of funny because I'm a speaker and a coach. I do Zoom and videos all the time. Right. But I was intimidated for the longest time mm. to do videos. And I just had to keep working at it and working at it and working at it. And I was like, okay, I know in 2020, I'm going to have to do a whole nother level of videos. And I mean, I did not know any of this was coming. I mean, this like threw in a whole nother big chunk totally. of videos because you can't do anything in person. But, and I thought to myself, I'm like, what's the word that's going to yeah. make me, get me motivated to when I'm like nervous to do a video, yeah. what is that one word? And I was like, fearless. I have to be fearless this whole entire year because fear drives so many things in our yeah. lives. And you guys got to be fearless. Yeah. You got to just climb the ladder, put in the work and invest in yourself and step outside of your comfort zone and just yeah. become totally fearless. I love it. Oh my gosh, that's so good. <laughs> Let me read you what people are saying here. It's awesome. Amy Jo says, we just love, love, love you, Tori. What an inspiration. Oh, you rock. She says, we honor you. Thank you for, uh, thank you so, with a lot of O's, <laughs> so much for enlightening and coaching us. And Angelica agrees like, yes. Um, oh, I love this. <laughs> This is beautiful. Anne says, you are amazing with a big heart. Um, oh, Fadlina thank says, you. thank you so much, Tori. Love this so much. You're an inspiration. Thank you so, so much. I cannot explain how much this means to me. Monique says, thank oh, you. Thanks. Thank you for answering my question. Uh, Amanda says, thank you so much for these wonderful tips and all of these resources. <laughs> and Ava says, thank you so much. Holly says, so true, fearless. Oh, I love this. Shivana's like, yes, amen, amen. Uh, Ridu <laughs> says, thank you so much, Tori. And Alicia, thanks, girl. Uh, you ladies are doing a great job. And Bridget and Barbara and everybody is loving this. Oh, I love what Barbara said. She says so many more quotes for my vision board. <laughs> Ooh, I love it. Oh, I love awesome. it. Awesome. Geta says this was so <laughs> inspirational. Wow. Oh my gosh, gosh, Tori, I am so grateful, and I do want to take a moment to honor you for the work that you have put in to this hour of coaching and all that incredible, the email that you've written, like ladies, if you haven't texted that number yet, I'm, we're gonna put it up again before we say goodbye, um, but if you haven't done that, you're gonna be so inspired just by the email that you receive when she sends There's this. a little checklist at the bottom, a daily checklist. It's so you guys have no excuse to stay on track. Yes, you can do it's it. so have good. Faith it's beautiful and it gives that space from a beautiful perspective. I know it's not easy to like create lovely documents like that. <laughs> and so you pulled it off. So that is awesome. Oh, Thank you for sharing that and for all of the wisdom and for and truly also for your vulnerability because your vulnerability of saying like, look, I lost a lot of pageants before I finally won and sharing your story even in the beginning of this call for for those that have joined in the middle of the call i highly encourage that you that you go back and listen to the beginning of this call where tori shares her experience because that vulnerability and even when you shared about how it felt to be first runner up i've been there many times that that is a, a very real and raw emotional experience. Yeah. So thank you for your vulnerability. And I'm so grateful for what God is doing in your world, that he's used those elements of you and then gave you that win. And now you're able to take all of these all of these strategies and all of these resources and share them and share all of the books that you created. Like, oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> this is just such a valuable to resource. I can't my own book so I can refer that one. I to know. I can't wait to read your book. It's going to be like <laughs> electricity popping off of the pages. Right? I hope so. That's <laughs> so the plan. true. Oh my gosh. So thank you so much. I'm going to well, put the screen you. up again. Um, this is how to get in touch with Tori. You go to highlights in heels with the letter N there, um, dot com. You can find her on YouTube. Please Please, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're trying to get her to a hundred, one hundred subscribers today. That would be awesome. Um, thank you to thank those of you, you who have already commented. This is so fun. And then the text word is unstoppable. That is the keyword that you can text to the number six, six, eight, six, six. And that is where you can get that download uh, with all of this goal setting worksheet so you can have your own planning day. Tori, thank you again for being on with us today. This was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's seriously such an honor. And I'm just extremely blessed to know you. And you're just doing incredible, incredible things. Ladies, trust her with everything. If you need a leg legacy project, I'm serious. Like she is your woman. Hands down. You're amazing. Thank, thank you, you so much. I love you. I love you. I'll talk I to you again you soon, too. babe. See you bye soon. Bye. bye, ladies. Thank you.